Hello, and welcome to the beginning of our long overdue video series centered around Mead. Now, I've been meaning to do this for some time, but between work and unhealthy amounts of Super Smash Bros, I have not had the chance until now. But this video series will explore all aspects of Mead, from what the hell it is, to the brewing process, how to drink it, what different types of Mead exists. But this, being the first episode, will focus on my meadery, all wise, and how it came into being. My name is Dylan Sprouse, and I am both an actor and a master brewer. Well, Dylan, why or how is that possible? Well, you're in luck, because I've spent actual money to explain that all to you. And I will start from the very beginning. When I was the ripe age of 16 years old, I, like most blonde-haired shitheads, wanted to get fucking hamskied with my friends. But since I was an enterprising lad, I decided to brew my own booze. Five gallons at a time, in fact. I brewed what I knew, which happened to be mead, from a weird intersection of literary interests and familial descent. From the stories I knew and studies I had done, I discovered that mead was a very approachable drink to start homebrewing with. So I set off on my journey, and I made a lot of bad mead, despite making a lot of my friends very happy. My father, discovering my dirty homebrew buckets behind the water heater in the garage, pulled a fast one and actually decided to nurture my new hobby. He saw what I had yet to see, though, which was that even more than drinking the mead, I actually loved brewing it. I really loved the process of it and the exploration of ingredients and the combinatory space. It was an art form which I had previously never experienced, and I gobbled up as much info as I could for 10 years, right up until the day that you watch this video. I brewed and experimented in college, in my dorm room secretly. I tested batches on my college acquaintances, one of which who went on to found the meadery with me, and in the discovery of myself, and the tastes and the styles of booze I preferred to drink, I uncovered the recipe for my flagship mead, the show mead. All the while, I yearned to know more about the market of mead. Just what was I dealing with in that untamed wilderness? What could I buy and try and learn from? Turns out it's a lot of Renfair nerds and Viking enthusiasts, but mead has always been destined for more. Mead survived and it needed a facelift. One that didn't push those groups aside per se, but invited them in as well as move forward with them into the new frontier, modernity. It was time and I was ready. I had just graduated college and I'd taken a long hiatus off from the acting industry I was accustomed to. I had previously trialed working in the booze industry and I gained invaluable experience, but I wanted more from life. I wanted to honor the gods and I wanted a stable business I could be passionate about and invest in. So I embarked on my mission, and I called in many banners to lend aid in opening up All Wise Meadery and Bar, my meadery right here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, New York. I leapt off the edge of the crevasse with no side of the other side. And with effort from both my business partners and my loved ones, we found real estate and built the business around the idea of rebirthing the world's oldest known alcoholic beverage. Now we have three different meads created many collaborations with different businesses and brewers and much, much more in store very soon. All of this work has been done between different acting jobs and trying my hardest to look fashionable at bizarre cocktail parties for the vampire aristocracy. But if this short episode intrigues you, prep your loins, brother, for more to come. And keep posted on our social media for the next episode of the series, The History of Mead. See you later.